So guys, welcome to another video here on my channel. Today I'm with Abdel Rahman Movafi. He's my ex instructor and A321 first officer. So I prepared some very interesting questions, so let's go. First of all, thank you that you have time. And yeah, my first question is, Sergio, can you just tell me your story? How did you become a pilot? First of all, it's my pleasure to be here with you. Thank you very much for the interview. And uh, my story starts since I was young. I was really a big fan of airplanes, any kind of airplane. It could be military, civil, helicopters, everything. I was doing my uh, bachelor degree in aviation engineering. All of a sudden, I said, okay, it's time to be on those big airplanes enjoy this amazing view every day and I started pursuing my uh, dream of becoming a pilot I started doing my PPL first and then afterwards I continued as the ATPL modular program and uh, afterwards instructor and then first officer I have to say that he was my instructor in air law and operational procedures and meteorology where well, he helped us in a lot of situations actually so what was your motivation or what is your motivation to fly or to be a pilot? Uh, again, as I said earlier that uh, I was doing something different than being a pilot and uh, really I was watching a lot of videos and I thought okay, like this kind of job, like every day you have uh, an amazing view, you see a different country, you see different cultures. It's quite an amazing thing to be flying all the time and controlling those amazing spectacular machines different types of course but they are all spectacular how like you can defy gravity in those machines it's an amazing thing so my motivation is just like okay i want to do something that i really like and flying is something that i like and of course to enjoy the best view ever of any office <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true man. yeah so how was your life then as a student <laughs> well the life as a student was uh, a little bit tough at the beginning, of course, when you have a, a lot of uh, new things that you need to learn and, and uh, memorize, let's say, like about the theoretical part, of course, uh, you have a lot of new questions and a lot of uh, interesting facts that you was not aware of before. So, of course, uh, you know that the pilot studies is a short time uh, in terms of the period, so you need to focus and really uh, work very hard in order to get your uh, examinations done on time so of course it was pretty tough uh, we had to sacrifice a lot of going out a lot of uh, uh, other playing around in order to focus on the study and pass and succeed in the theoretical part uh, the flying part was actually the fun part it was a more interesting one so you had to fly around you can see a lot of uh, new places discover new aerodromes make new maneuvers and of course interact with uh, professional instructors that they are, are always willing to deliver to you the uh, information that they have gained throughout the years of experience. So it's, it's a fun part. Yes, it's learning, but it is, uh, of course, I prefer it more than theoretical parts, and I think you do as well. <laughs> so where was your school? My school is a BA training. I did my BA oh, yes. yeah, here. I did the APL modular with BA training, the flight season we did it in uh, Camus. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, I had my PPL is from uh, Spain. I had uh, a small little school in uh, near Barcelona, and it's uh, near Girona, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, how do you remember your first solo? <laughs> oh, my first solo was uh, <laughs> it was one of a kind, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, I was not prepared for it. I mean, uh, when when I had my first solo, I had my instructor didn't tell me that tomorrow you were going to have your first solo. It was a surprise for me. I was doing like. Uh, traffic circuit flight, we were doing traffic circuit, touch and goes and so on, after a few traffic circuits, my instructor told me, okay Muffy, now it's time to do a full stop landing. I did full stop landing and the emperor he said, okay, don't shut down the engine, I will come out now and you go do exactly the same thing, make a touch and go and full stop landing. And I said, like, but well, I didn't expect that, but he said, okay, you have to do it now. Of course, like, uh, I had, <laughs> you know, I was excited, but I had to cover it with some courage, of course, and I had to go for it. Okay, yes, sir, I'll do it. And, uh, yeah, I had to do it, and it felt amazing because the airplane was way 
way so much lighter. And of course, I was speaking to myself, like, oh yeah, I can't do this. I can land the plane by myself. It feels so much lighter, but yeah, I can't do it by myself. It's a, um, a big emotional stage in the, the life of any pilot that has first solo. So it, it was a great, great feeling to be able to take off and land the airplane by myself. It was a spectacular feeling. Yeah. <laughs> So what was your feeling then when you changed the aircraft from the TEP now to the A320? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a totally <laughs> different thing. It's like, the, you know, the Technum is like 600 kilograms maximum takeoff mass, yeah. and the Airbus is like, I don't know, 120 times, maybe more than this, so depending on the configuration, of course. But it's, it's, of course, totally different thing, totally different feeling, and uh, the way you control the airplane is different, the way you calculate things are different, uh, it's a huge leap, yeah? it's a huge leap of difference of ways of flying, fly by wire, conventional flying, general aviation, totally different thing and you feel of course it comes with it, uh, bigger responsibilities, mm -hmm. you're not flying the uh, small airplane anymore, you're flying a much bigger one with of course a lot of uh, passengers with you on board. So how does it feel to have like the huge responsibility for that many lives for it, all it, the passengers? It's a big, it's a big, it's a big responsibility. Of course, I mean uh, now we will have to uh, be very professional, very competent, do everything uh, as the book says, uh, in order to ensure the safety of uh, those passengers. Those passengers are flying with you with blind eyes, they sleep on your flight, and they have trust. They have trust in you that you will get them to their destination safely, and at the same time comfortably. So it's not just safety, safety and comfortable. So you have also to check the weather, avoid the turbulence, CBs and all those kind of things in order to ensure the trust of your passengers and they continue to fly with you again in your airline. Of course, it's a reputation of the airline when you make a good flight and a smooth flight, good landings, good takeoffs and all those kind of things. Of course, it uh, has a great impact uh, on the reputation of the company. So taking responsibility, of course, it is in the uh, DNA of any pilot uh, regardless. Okay, so uh, what was your best and your worst experience for now in the aviation career? <laughs> uh, well, okay, I'll start with the worst. Uh, the worst was uh, just right after graduation, of course. Uh, I mean, in my time, it was a little bit difficult to get a job. At that time, it was the aviation market was not really promising, I would say. And uh, of course, right after graduation, it happened to many other pilots. They really couldn't find the uh, job right away. Uh, well, I didn't stay put. I started to look for other alternatives, so I became a flight instructor and theoretical knowledge instructor. I've been working on uh, related to aviation during the hard times of uh, aviation until the time that picked up and I actually got my job as a uh, A321 first officer. Uh, the best situation I'd say when I started to work, uh, maybe the best feelings that I got uh, during uh, my career so when um, my student is starting to fly his first solo. It's a great achievement. Like uh, this guy, he also he came from a very different background or very different career type and I managed to teach him how to fly. So it feels so good. I feel like, you know, okay, this is my work. Mm -hmm. This is amazing, of course. And of course, when I got my first job as an airline pilot, that was amazing, amazing feeling, of course. <laughs> So how would you define a professional pilot or a professional pilot student? Well, any professional pilot is just um, the guy has to continue learning all the time. And he doesn't stop learning, he's always learning from his mistakes, he's learning from the people around him. Uh, I would say you are like a sponge. Yeah, you try to soak up information from every single person around you. He came from with different, uh, I would say, experiences and you try to take the best from everyone. So you're never like, yeah, I know everything and all those kind of things. No, you have to learn all the time. You have to really be uh, very competent, uh, punctual, always on time. And uh, of course, you have to have excellent communication skills. You will have to be communicating with passengers, with your colleagues in the airline. So you have to have really very really good communication skills. Yeah. So is that as well your daily motto to study every day or do you have another motto? Well, my, my, my motto is just never give up and uh, yeah, I never stop learning, exactly. So it's uh, never give up and never st stop learning. That's my big motto, that's for sure. Yeah. 
in the end, maybe which useful tip you can give to future pilots, so, so to pilot students, I mean. Uh, like I've been always telling you in the classroom, just uh, you really need to work hard. It's, uh, the studies of the pilot is uh, it's not a long time, it's not five years studies, it's just two years, maybe even less. So you need really to put all your power, all your focus during this short period of time in order to reach your goal and become a pilot. And of course, try uh, to sacrifice like going out or just having fun for a short period of time in order to reach your goal. Um, organize your day, uh, try to organize your day in advance, uh, prepare what you're going to do next. So try to make a list, okay, I'm going to do this tomorrow, this tomorrow, this tomorrow, this at that time and tick what you do. So if you tick what you do, you see, okay, you, you achieved what you have planned. Otherwise, oh, I'll do that tomorrow, I'll get lazy, and so on. So make a plan for every day, put it on a reminder on your phone, and tick what you actually uh, did or achieved in that day. Uh, every other thing is just like, listen to your instructor. Uh, these guys uh, have been through what you have uh, gone through, and they have made it successfully, so take their advices, these, those people who want you to be better, they want you to learn aviation, they really don't want to, you to, I don't know, to suffer in your aviation career. <laughs> so, so yeah, listen to them all the time. Short hope for now. Short hope for now, so. Mm, in between, I would say, <laughs> I would love to enjoy the sunrise and sunset, so I would say, okay, let's say night flight. Say Airbus. <laughs> mm, light work. Never. I always even tend to leave it at home even before going to the supermarket thing. Well, since I say the Airbus in the beginning, I say 747 now, so it's me. So your company cannot blame you. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Check by yourself for sure. Okay. Manual flight whenever it is possible and allowed. Without. Without. Fish. Mmm, scarce. So guys, that's it with the interview. Thanks to Mo Buffy again for uh, the interview. I put your link in the description so you can follow Mobafi as well on Instagram, check his nice videos and photos. So thank you very much and see you in another video. Thank you.